Hey everyone, I hope you all are doing good and having a wonderful day. In this video, we are going to see that what is business logic vulnerabilities. So we are going to start from the very basic, like we are going to see that what is business logic vulnerability. Then we will see that how business logic vulnerability is very much different from the vulnerabilities that we see around the internet, like uh, SQL injection, cross site scripting, etc. Right. And then we're going to see a live demonstration of how we can find business logic vulnerability. And I'm going to show you the exact scenario which I've used to find this particular issues. Right. And finally, we're going to understand the flow of that particular scenario. And we'll see that why this particular specific behavior was considered as a vulnerability and how did it has a security impact. Right. So uh, before going to this video, as always, if you haven't checked out my previous video in which I have shown you that how we can maintain anonymity in uh, doing bug bounties that can result in some extra bugs. Right. So if you're interested, then go ahead and check it out. The link of that particular video is given in the description as well as you can click on the link displaying at the right side of the screen so that you can just watch it first. Right. And now with that being said, let us get started. So let us try to understand what is business logic vulnerability, right? In with simple examples and scenarios. First of all, let's try to talk about a simple definition of it so that we can get an overall idea like what is a business logic issue. What we can say is that if we can find a logical bug, a logical bug or issues, okay, that can result in security issues security issues or impact okay then we can consider this as a business logic vulnerability okay or what you can say is that if you have found some logical issues that can financially or by their reputation affect their uh, you know financial status or their reputation then what we can say is that that particular vulnerability is business logic vulnerability as simple as that okay now let us try to take a simple example so that we can understand that uh, what is actually business logic vulnerability and how we can look into them for example let's say that we have an application over here and we're going to assume that this is an e-commerce application right now upon doing uh, some basic reconnaissance we'll see that this application have a login functionality right this will have a registration functionality okay and this could have let's say payment functionality right because since it is a it is an e-commerce so obviously there will be payment functionality then we'll have like add to cart and so on right now if we look to the login functionality or the registration functionality right typically when we are looking for vulnerabilities in this kind of uh, functionalities what we do is we look for either xss right maybe we can look for sql or maybe we can look for some other attacks that are you can say the traditional attacks right maybe we can also look for no sql or something like that right but instead of this this is not we want to do what we want to do is we want to analyze right we want to analyze the flow we want to analyze the flow of this functionality right how registration happening because in registration itself there could be a lot of things going on for example there could be possible that the database is on a different server that is first getting connected at the client side or maybe it is handling some kind of logic to you know prevent a duplicate username or unique username right so in this kind of thing what you can see is you can say that what if there is a functionality that don't allow you to register with the same username right so you have identified something so now your next goal is to see that if you can break through it like if you can bypass this functionality to register multiple username with the same value right in most of the registration functionality you'll see that something is very unique some field are actually very unique it could be username uh, it could be email address and so on right so we need to check that i need mean, to verify whether these things are actually indeed uh, have a good flow or we can bypass it for example the, it, it could be possible that the application is checking the username first right 
and if the username is not present in the database then it is returning true so that we can continue our further registration otherwise we need to change the username or they will suggest some username so what if we can bypass that what if we can bypass that request basically that is uh, you know validating whether the username is uh, uh, unique or not what if we can drop that particular request right will it allow us to uh, like register with the uh, with the same username or it will have will it have a different uh, scenario right so these are the things that we need to check into a logical issues for example we can go same with the payment one like uh, we can see that if payment have uh, some kind of parameter tampering or not right sometimes in these kind of application you you will not see some csrf protection right like i've came across the csrf in add to cart functionality in google in that scenario itself you need to like create a security impact right you need to create a security impact so that the the, uh, the owner or the the security team will understand that okay this could actually lead to some uh, serious reputation damage or maybe some business impact or maybe it could lead to some uh, some like uh, cia breach to the clients right so maybe this is the thing okay so this is basically what is the business logical issue i hope that you have understood it and now we are going to see a small example of how we can look into business logical vulnerabilities and then we'll see that how that flow is working okay so let's get back to the demonstration part thank you So now let us try to see that how we can find these vulnerabilities on a web application, right? So for this, I have created a small lab, which is actually based on a real world scenario. So I was able to find the same vulnerability in the same scenario for a private program. So let me just show you. So if I just paste this link, you'll see that it says that upload your resume here, right? You can see it says a drag and drop or browse, and you can just click on upload and it will upload the file, right? no issues so let's try to upload a file and you can say it says that supports png jpeg and jpg so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select a file for example let's i'm going to select this png file right over here i'm going to drag it and i'm going to paste it over here okay let's paste this and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on upload okay once you're going to click on upload you'll see that it says that now we have got your resume we have got your resume and we will get back to you in 24 hours okay no issues so from here we have understood that okay we have uploaded a resume right it is getting uploaded and someone is going to see that resume at the back end right so that they can verify whether i am suitable for this job role or not right now let us try to analyze the flow of this application so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn on the intercept from here okay and i'm going to select this file again and i'm going to click on upload and now if you see over here we've got this request let me just maximize it and you see this is a request going on we have the image data over here we have the file name and we'll intercept the response okay and as you can see once the file has been uploaded we are getting this link for the image so it says image path and this is the image path over here right localhost 2023 12 and this okay so the application so the uh, the person is going to visit this particular uh, resume from their local machine in the machine in which this web application is hosted right let's forward this and now as you can see there is this new request going on as save details right it says that image path equals to this and let us just intercept the response as well and you can see that now it says that we've got your resume we'll get back to you in 24 hours and if you see over here it says that we've got your resume and we'll get back to you in 24 hours right now the problem over here is that we can actually modify the link which is getting sent at the back end after the file has been uploaded what i mean by that is let me just show you so i have just uploaded it right and now i'm going to click on upload and i'm going to just intercept the response again okay you see we've got the link and now as an attacker what i can do is i can modify the link for example, I'm just going to select like uh, HTTPS and we'll say Bing.com. Okay. Bing.com. Let us just forward this and you see that now the request which is going to this endpoint save details is 
this URL which is Bing.com which is the URL which we have given okay again we can just intercept the response to see that whether this link is indeed saved at the back end or not you can just forward this and now you see we've got your resume and we'll get back to you in 24 hours so there wasn't any a different message so we can confirm from here that the file has indeed been uploaded right we can forward this and now let us try to understand from the uh, perspective of that person who's going to visit our resume okay so maybe there will be a new endpoint that they can use to visit the resume right so i'm just going to open it in a new and new uh, window and let's say view resume so if they want to view the resume then they may need to click on some different endpoint and here we are going to assume that it is view resume right let's hit enter now you see we have got three resume files over here okay and if we see closely you see that all of these files are pointing to the local host right the url the exact url which was getting sent to the save details endpoint right and if you see over here this time you can see that we have got this ping.com right so assuming that i am someone who's going to visit all this resume so i'm going to click on this resume for example and without knowing i will be redirected to bing.com right now you may be thinking that what could be a possible uh, security impact in this scenario so let's try to discuss this with a simple example Now, as you can see over here, this was the actual flow of the lab that we have just saw, right? So let us try to understand the flow first, and then we'll see that where is the vulnerability lying, okay? So first, you can see that the client, and please don't mind my drawing, okay? And now, yeah, let us get started. The first thing is that the client is saying that, hey, upload this file for me, right? So it is actually sending the file to the server, and what the server is doing, the server is uploading the file to the cloud to the third party application right so it could be s3 bucket it could be google uh, storage or something like that okay once the file has been uploaded the cloud responded to the client right and said that hey there i have uploaded the file and here's the link and this is the file link okay we've got this file link and the client now send this request back to the server that okay i've got this uh, link or i've got this file link which confirmed that my file has been uploaded now please save this link and redirect me to the home page okay now this thing has been done by the javascript code in the front end part okay so client is nothing over here but the browser okay or us the user okay so it has just said that i've got the link and please redirect to the home page and save this link in your database and finally the server has uh, redirected the user to the home page and it has saved the link over here in the sql database right simple as that now uh, before going further let us try to understand that in in this flow where the vulnerability is lying okay so as we have seen before we can clearly say that in step number four as you can see the link is given to the client right without uh pro being processed by the server right and the server is not even validating that which link it got therefore the client can actually change the file link to any file that he or she wants for example they can simply say that i've got this link and in the link they can specify their own custom link right like https bing.com okay and this thing will be saved into the database and now someone who is going to visit the resume or going to visit the file we'll see that once they are clicking on the file they will redirect it to the bing.com right now this seems very uh, like uh, there, there doesn't seem any impact but you can see that if the attacker can host something on their application and then if they can provide the link over here then unknowingly the person who is actually uh, viewing the resumes and the files will be affected right because they will be able to download the file and maybe in order to view the file like if we take the example of resume again if they're going to see the resume because of course they will and then what they'll do is that accidentally they'll open the file and the file can contain malware and that can result in some business loss right business loss right this is the reason why this vulnerability was accepted and this is the reason why that we have confirmed that okay this is actually a logical flaw that can result in a security vulnerability right i hope that you've understood it if you have any doubts if you have any issues feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section also 
do join our telegram channel if you want to stay updated with the latest trends and technologies going under cyber security and web development and if you like the way i teach then i am currently running two courses the first one is bug bounty the ultimate guide to hunt account takeovers then the second course is hacking windows with python and i have recently launched a new course which is really loved by all of you guys which is the art of web reconnaissance right so if you want to get know more about all these courses then you can check the link given in the description and now with that being said keep learning keep hacking and thank you so much for watching